Hello there friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we'll be looking at tooth identification. Um, I hope the tooth waxing test went okay for everybody. We had it on Wednesday, Thursday, we on Thursday, it's now Friday. Um, <laughs> so I hope that went okay for everybody. I feel like mine was good, uh, I definitely passed it. But when it comes to finite detail, I really struggled with that. Like my disso buckle cusp was a little bit big, a little bit too big. But anyway, let's forget about that. Let's move on to tooth identification. And uh, <laughs> I have scoured the internet for tooth identification tests and I could not find what exactly what I was looking for. So I thought, well, might as well make my own videos on this. So to practice identifying teeth that you've not seen before, I thought I'd film me holding up the teeth that I've collected from my tooth collecting pots from the NHS practices that I've been to. So these are actual teeth from actual pe people kind of gross but you know hey it's all it's all good we're all gonna be dentists we're gonna knock that out of our system i will warn you guys some of these are re like severely severely decayed so there may be a few cusps missing uh, which makes it harder however if you guys can identify these then you'll basically be expert level for the real exam the ones that we're gonna have on wednesday will be literally perfect models of the teeth so if you can pass all of this if you if you, if you get good at this stuff then should be easy on the, on the actual day. Anyway, let's wrap this up and go straight into the video. Okay, so one of the first things that you can look at when you're identifying this particular tooth is that you can see it has three roots. So I know you're not supposed to use the roots to help identify the teeth, but it might give you a little bit of an inkling of what you're looking at. So just remember three roots uh, is characteristic of upper molars. So that kind of leads you in the right direction. So upper molars, and this tooth doesn't have the cross-shaped fissure pattern, which you see in the mandibular molars. So you can rule that out, it's not a mandibular molar, it must be an upper, uh, especially because it has that H-shaped, um, you know, kind of curvy sort of fissure pattern that's not, not cross-shaped, you know, if you get what I mean. And it's not very square, it's kind of more rhomboidal. So yeah, we think, okay, upper permanent molar, fantastic. Then look for that big mesial palatal cusp and then it ha remember it has an oblique ridge that joins the biggest cusp to the one diagonally opposite to it. And the one diagonally opposite to it sits next to the buccal cusp. So that you've got two buccal cusps and they're roughly the same height. Unfortunately as tooth we can't see the buccal cusps because they're decayed. But you can see the mesial palatal cusp and I'll explain why I think this is the mesial palatal cusp and not the other one because the oblique ridge does extend all the way across, is because it's next to a, a, a much smaller cusp and you can see a really distinct ridge that kind of divides the two and that's the palatal groove. And that palatal groove, that is really significant because it extends from the palatal surface, from the inside of the mouth, onto the occlusal, or wait, it's under, isn't it really? The, onto the occlusal surface. Whereas on the other side, you have got a buccal groove, which you could confuse with the palatal groove, but the buccal groove doesn't go all the way onto the occlusal surface. So that kind of indicates, um, oh, and one other thing is that the surface that we can see that isn't decayed is really curved. That's characteristic of the palatal surface, whereas the buccal surface of the upper molars, that's much straighter. I don't know why I'm using my hands a lot. I just like, I get really excited about teeth. Uh, <laughs> and then the last thing that I have to say about this tooth is that we can see that the distal palatal cusp isn't quite squished yet. Uh, we, know, we know that as you go along the arch, the upper molars, the distal, distal palatal cusp gets kind of, it starts disappearing as you go along. Go back to one of my older videos if this isn't familiar with you and you need to refresh your memory. Yeah, so, and, and the tooth starts to become triangular as you go more towards the back. But that, that isn't the case here. You can quite clearly see the distal palatal cusp, so yeah, must be a first. 
upper permanent molar. And to decide between left and right, well, we know where the mesial placal cusp is. I'll probably put a video up showing you guys what I'm thinking of because I can't, I can't use my hands or describe it very well. So the answer was upper first, left first permanent molar. Okay, so that was the first one done. Now I'm gonna leave you guys alone to identify the rest of the teeth and just kind of treat it like the real thing and then you can check your answers in the description or I might put it at the end afterwards, so yeah. So I hope that was helpful for you guys. Uh, let me know in the comments what you thought of this video and thank you so much for watching. Like, it really makes my day that we're now on 37 subscribers. That is amazing. So keep remembering to hit that like button and subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.